welcome to the lecture on dmm1 in the, today's class uh, we will be talking about a bis force of steel steels are uh, designated by a group of letters or numbers indicating any one of the following three properties one the tensile strength two the carbon content three composition of alloying elements one way of uh, designating a steel fe360 here this 360 indicates uh, the minimum tensile strength for a steel another way of indicating uh, is fe capital e 250 this indicates uh, minimum tensile strength of uh, minimum yield strength of 250 newton per mm square earlier one is minimum tensile strength and fe capital e indicates uh, that is yield strength the designation of plain carbon steel consists of the following three quantities one a figure indicating 100 times the average percentage of carbon a letter capital c and a figure indicating 10 times the average percentage of manganese for example if you take 55 c4 55 indicates 100 into the percentage of the carbon carbon percentage is 0.55 into 100 that is 55 and uh, the preceding uh, letter capital c indicates that this 0.55% uh, is carbon and then next four indicates the percentage of the manganese manganese is uh, multiplied by a factor 10 so here it is indicated as 4 that means the manganese percentage is uh, 0.4 so 0.4 into 10 4 that is given next uh, it is also indicated like this 40 c8 here 40 c 40 means uh, that is carbon percentage so it could be between 0.35 to 0.45 the average of 0.35 and 0.45 is 0.4 so that is 0.4 into 100 that is 40 c indicates carbon and then 8 that is manganese manganese uh, is uh, average 0.8 that means it could be minimum of 0.7 and maximum of 0.9 the average is 0.8 so 0.8 into 10 is 8 so that way also the plain carbon steels are indicated so for different elements uh, we have different multiple uh, multiplication factors here you can see uh, so here you can see the chromium and uh, cobalt and nickel you have the multiplication factor 4 and for silicon uh, tungsten aluminum beryllium uh, vanadium plumbum that is uh, lead uh, copper and manganese uh, you have multiplication factor 10 already we have seen here 4 that is uh, 0.4% 8 uh, average of 0.8% uh, and uh, for things like uh, titanium zirconium uh, molybdenum uh, etc we have a multiplication factor 100 so this is also true for carbon let us see 25 cr 4 m 02 so 25 is 0.25% carbon cr4 that is chromium let us go back and for chromium the multiplication factor is 4 so here it is given as cr4 that means how much is uh, chromium percentage chromium factor is 4 that means 4 divided by 4 that is 1% is the chromium and then molybdenum 2 so what is the factor for molybdenum molybdenum is in the third that is 100 is the factor for molybdenum so mo2 that means uh, 2 divided by 100 that is 
two percent, uh, that is point zero two percent molybdenum. One must say. Then uh, plain carbon steel, low carbon steel contains less than point three percent. So plain carbon steels are categorized into popularly three. One is a uh, low carbon steel it is also known as mild steel where the carbon percentage is uh, less than 0.3% and then medium carbon steel the carbon percentage is between 0.3 and 0.5% uh, and uh, it is popularly known as a uh, machinery steel medium carbon steel is also known as the machinery steel then high carbon steel the carbon percentage is more than 0.5 percent. When carbon percentage is uh, equal to or more than uh, 2 percent, uh, then it is known as a cast iron. Here we can see different uh, grades of steel and the tensile strength, yield strength, hardness, and elongation. So 7 C4. For the grade 7 C4, the tensile strength is 320, and uh, the yield strength uh, hardness are not defined here. And elongation is 27 percent it is very ductile material and when we go to the 10 C4 that means the carbon percentage has increased 7 C that means 7 divided by 100 that is 0 0.07 percent 10 that is 10 divided by 100 is 0.1 percent where the tensile strength is 340 and elongation is 26 percent it is also very high ductile material then let us move to the next grade 30 c8 that means the carbon percentage is 0.3 and for which the tensile strength is 500 and its yield strength is 400 hardness is 179 elongation is 21 percent so you can clearly observe that as the carbon percentage increases the tensile strength increases but the elongation decreases. <coughs> Let us go to the next 40 C8 where the tensile strength is 580, yield strength is 380. That means yield strength is reducing. <coughs> Here the hardness increased to 217, the elongation reduced by some 3 percent from the earlier case that is 18. Next, uh, <coughs> 45 C8, uh, it is 630 is tensile strength and 380 is the yield strength, hardness increases to 229 whereas the elongation decreases to 15 and when we move on to 50 C4, the carbon percentage is now 0.5 that means uh, we have reached a case of high carbon steel where tensile strength is 660 and yield strength is 460 the hardness rises to 241 whereas elongation drops to just 13 percent when we move to the next grade 55 c8 720 is the tensile strength 460 is the yield strength hardness rises to 265 and elongation remains at 13 and 60 C4 carbon goes to 0.6 percent and tensile strength reaches to 750 and for this material the yield strength is undefined and hardness is 255 and the elongation is 11 percent only elongation diminishes substantially next 65 C6 uh, the tensile strength uh, remains same at 750 yield strength is again undefined and hardness is 255 and uh, elongation reduces to 10 percent one can clearly observe that as the carbon percentage goes up the tensile strength is going up yield strength uh, is uh, <coughs> varying whereas hardness is going up and the elongation is coming down when carbon percentage increases hardness increases and the ductility decreases one can clearly identify in applications uh, like automobile bodies and hoods uh, 
the ability of the material to deform to a greater extent uh, or ductility is the most important consideration. So, in making the automobile bodies, that means the, the place where we are going to sit uh, is made of uh, most ductile material and uh, in applications like gears, machine tools, spindles, uh, transmission shafts, uh, we require a soft core but the surface should be hard and for that purpose we use 40 C8, 45 C8 and 50 C4, 55 C8, 60 C4 that means these are all medium and uh, more mildly uh, high carbon steel. So, they are on the border of high carbon, they are not uh, very high, they are on the border where the core is uh, uh, really soft but the outer surface is hard. Spring wires are subjected to severe stress and here the strength is the most important uh, criteria. Spring wires are subjected to lot of stress and uh, hence the strength is most important criteria. In such cases we will go for high carbon steel such as 65 C6 that is in the end of the list uh, shown in the other diagram. Low carbon and medium carbon steels can satisfactorily weld it. So, when we want to weld things uh, low carbon and medium carbons can be welded very easily and for forging also we have to go for low and medium carbon steels. Uh, they can be very satisfactorily forged but some components like a connecting rod or crankshaft uh, which require heat treatment after forging that means they should also have the hard uh, surface. Uh, in such cases uh, again we will go for 40 C8 uh, like the one here shown in the transmission shafts or gears. So, the 40 C8 uh, is readily response to the heat treatment. Next uh, let us go to the alloy steels. Alloy steel is defined as carbon steel to which one or more alloying elements are added to obtain certain beneficial effects. So, when we want to add something to the steel, so we want to add those things in order to get some desired benefits. So, to uh, obtain such desired benefits, uh, the most commonly added elements are silicon, manganese, nickel, chromium, molybdenum and tungsten. So, when we add uh, these things uh, either in combination or independently, we are going to get uh, certain properties. The term alloy steel is usually referred to low alloy steel containing from uh, 1 to 4 percent of alloying elements and that means these alloying elements are between 1 to 3 4 percent uh, 1 2 3 4 that means between 1 and 4 we call them as uh, low alloy steels or simply alloy steels. On the other hand the stainless or heat resisting steels are called high alloy steels. The high resisting steels or stainless steels are called high alloy steels. For example, uh, 55 SI7 leaf and coil springs. So, 55 SI7 here 55 means 0.55 percent carbon and SI means silicon. When silicon is uh, 7 that means we can go back and find out the multiplication factor for silicon. Silicon the multiplication factor is 10. So, that means uh, when it is shown as uh, 7 that means silicon is 0.7 percent. So, when silicon is 0.7 percent, uh, the leaf and coil springs are made with uh, such alloy steel. So, next uh, 35 C15, 37 C15, these are used to make uh, axles, shafts and crankshafts. Uh, so, this is some medium carbon steel. Next uh, 35 Mn. 6 and MO3. So, 35 is 0.35 percent carbon, 
Mn6 means manganese 6 that is uh, factor is 10 that is 0.6 percent uh, manganese and molybdenum 3 that is 0.3 percent molybdenum. So, bolt, stud, axle, lever and general engineering components are made with uh, the alloy steel 35 Mn MO3. Next uh, 16 Mn5 and Cr4. Here 16 uh, is uh, 0.16 percent carbon and manganese 5 that means uh, let us go back to manganese. Manganese here is that multiplication factor is 10 that means uh, 0.5 percent manganese and Cr4. So, for chromium multiplication factor is 4 here Cr4 means 1 percent chromium. So, these are used to make gears and shafts. The chromium when it is added, it gives uh, two things. Uh, one is uh, the hardness and second one is uh, its uh, corrosion resistance.